what's going on fellas so hope you guys are having a good weekend today today i'm going to try to record a few videos on my x max for you guys um this is my new truck and it's been around for quite a while and i've uh, been using it to do videos on and stuff like that and sadly i had to rob the motor out of it recently for my wife's truck and i'm getting to getting hers warranty so i can put it right back in here and then i'm going to get ready to run this truck finally for the first time i've had it for a long time since last may of 21. Uh, today I'm going to go ahead and do most of what I want to get done in this truck before I run it. Um, you guys probably saw the pinion video. We're going to we're gonna revisit that. Um, I'm actually going to be changing the gears that are in it right now. Um, and put some WFO gears in there that are going to hold up just for the rest of its life. Longer than the truck's going to last. Um, I'm going to be doing a few other mods to it. I like to call these like the bulletproof mods. Of course it doesn't make the truck bulletproof. It's just the same. But it does help a lot guys. So what we're going to be doing is let's start with these the rpm rear knuckles um they are what they are i'll show you guys exactly what they're about so i don't talk so much before the video i, I try not to uh, i just i like to give whatever information i can give you guys we're we'll doing the rpm hinge pin kits uh these I actually have another bo another bag I need to grab these uh take the place of the stock pins on the upper and lower control arms uh these are actually going to go on my wife's truck we uh tore up the gears on her center diff the other day and these are the front rpm knuckles these are questionable the back ones these are great no issues whatsoever it seems i'm gonna try them maybe for the video i'm gonna try them but it seems like these here tend to break easier than the oem or the factory what comes on the track on the uh, on the x max I, I i can't say for sure i've put these on before and then i've gone out and clipped a tree not on purpose i've clipped a tree before and lo and behold it just snapped it i'm like I've never even broke a stock one before. I put these on and I break it right away, like literally the same day. So I don't remember if I broke it more than one, but I do remember when I put it on, I popped it right away, like early, you know, minutes afterwards. So we're going to put them on and we're going to give it a try. Uh, these here, these parts here, along with these here, we're going to be doing a Savox 2290 servo. This is still a factory servo. The truck hasn't been run yet. Uh, we're going to be doing all these items here. And when you do this, this truck's going to be almost bulletproof. It's going to hold up tons better night and day compared to if you went and you bought this x max you threw some batteries in it you didn't check anything you just went out and ran it i guarantee you with the servo upgrade the rpm knuckles front and rear the hinge pin kits the gears we're going to put in it you're going to have some fun you will definitely have some fun um like this there's a very very fair chance it may break the first run traxxas makes good vehicles it's not that it's junk they leave room for improvement I guess that you can put your own servo in there, you can do this, you can do that. I mean, part of the having a hobby is you get to work on it. It's fun. Sometimes we get in the shop and we like to take it apart. There's nothing wrong with it. Just, it's fun, right? So, I guess maybe that's what it's for. I don't know. Anyway, let's get going. Um, we're going to start with the knuckles first, the front knuckle. Let's do the front. you got to do a little bit of drilling. Not a big deal. Uh, show you guys what to do. The drilling is for the pins, not so much for the knuckles. So, let's get going on this Okay, so let's go ahead and get the tires off this thing. So let me get these tires off and I'll be right back. So the front tire is off. So let's go ahead and start with the right front. And let's go ahead and pull this knuckle off. If I happen to leave anything out taking it apart, don't worry at all. I'm going to be sure I cover it very slowly going back together. In some of my videos, I may kind of blow things apart pretty quick. You know, taking it apart, you know, it's super easy. It's really quick. It takes half, the, a quarter of the time to take it apart. Just put it together. You got to figure out how things go back together. So should I leave anything out? You're like, hey, whoa, 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 you know, don't worry, we're gonna get it back together. Put it together, I won't, I won't leave you hanging. And if I do, I really apologize because I, I, I really try hard in these videos. So let's go ahead and take this front knuckle off. We're gonna take the right front off first. So you're gonna have a pin here and a pin here. We need to take out, and you've got two little two millimeter screws that retain these upper pins. So let's go ahead and pull these out right now. Now the upper one. All right, okay, and we'll put these here in a little bolt bin. Now let's go ahead and pull our wheel hex off. And on the top, you can see that there's a little bridge that's raised. You can get a little tiny screwdriver like that right underneath it. So let's take that off. Keep your finger, keep your finger over it because it will fly. There we go. Now you can pull the wheel hex off. 
okay? Now we'll take a small bit, like a one and a half, and push the upper and lower pins out. We'll push out the lower, it comes out right there. And now the upper, there we go. Okay, so those pins there, we're not going to reuse those. You can save those if you like. So just go ahead and pull that thing out of there. The hinge pin bolts or screws or hinge pins, threaded hinge pins, whatever you want to call them, they're the same front and rear. So go ahead and grab your set and let's get these opened up. So we need to drill this hole out here and that's a 5 30 seconds. You need a 5 30 seconds for that. That's what I use and it works just fine. So you can drill from the back side forward or the forward side back. I prefer to go just from the forward back because I don't want to wall this hole back here out any further. So I'm just going to take my little drill bit. Just I'm going to wall. That's plenty good. So I'm going to, you already got a hole there to start with. So you're just going to drill it. And that's it. Now we'll do this one. Okay, now let's just be sure that it's going to fit through there. See, there we go. It's sticking through a little bit. And probably could be a hair bigger, but I think we can pull that through there. So, so now we're ready to put those right back in there. So that's done. I think I told you guys are starting on the right front. I don't know why I said that. But uh, anyway, so now we're going to go ahead and change our our rear knuckles real quick. I mean that just slides right off of there. And all this here I'm going to compare with the RPM. Let's open up our RPM rear knuckles. Okay. So let's go ahead and pop the back bearing out. We're not going to use it. We will use the front one. Okay. So there's our stock bearings right there. And look what you get with the RPM. It's just huge. It's a lot more stout, heavy bearing. What happens with this one is the first time you do a, a, a good, you know, good size jump and you land it kind of funny, you end up blowing that a little black ring out of there, that little cover, that little seal. It will end up hanging on your tie rod like that. So, all right, and to put this back in, you literally just pop the bearings back in and reassemble it. It's very quick. So you pop your back bearing in there, just like right that there, and then your stock bearing still is reused. You put that in the front. Like that. So there we go. Now we have our upgraded left rear. Okay, and then your axle, well, you just slide it right back in there. And then you just reassemble it. You just line it right back up. So let's go ahead and go back together with this. Okay, so just lift your arm, put your dog bone back in the drive cup, and then we're going to go ahead and put the knuckle back in. And then it only goes in one way. The bottom of the knuckle has a really wide mount to it, and that goes in the bottom, kind of like the max. So you're going to go ahead and take your screw. Put it in from the front side and push it into place. There we go. See it poke through there. And then we we'll do the same with the top. There it is. All right. So then we'll put our nut on and then we'll tighten these up. I have one of the little tools that came with the uh, rustler, I believe, and one of the little deals happens to work just great on there. So okay. So I'm going to hold it back up with this little stock wrench that we got and then. The, the Allen that you're going to need is a 3 millimeter, so we'll just tighten these right up. You get them a little snug, and that's all you got to do there. We'll do the top one. There we go. There we go. Don't that look sweet? That is going to be a lot more stout than the factory setup. So then, you know, of course, you got a, a stock rear here that you can use. You can put your bearing back in the back if you want. You put it in your little your little toolbox that you take with you and throw it in there. And if this one seems happens to break, just take your front bearing, put it back in this one here, and go back about your business. You see, this is a very very easy uh, easy fix out in the out of the field when you're bashing. All right, so let's just put our wheel hub on now. We'll put that on. Be sure it's on far enough to get your little pin on there. If it's not, just what happened is it didn't go all the way into the bearing back here. So what you can do is probably that little pin that holds that, that, that stub shaft slid out. Be sure that pin is slid into place and then it'll slide in. You, you'll see. It's, it's really simple. Alright, so then just take your little pin here, your little clip, and pop it right back on there. There. 
Here we go guys, that's the left rear, let's do the right rear and then we'll get on to the front. Okay, let's pull these little retainer screws out for the pins. Okay, now let's pull off our little clip, pulling our little hex. go in the wheel hex. Let's push our pins out. There you go. Those are those are spares. Okay now let's go ahead and just change this out real quick. So all we need is our front bearing. Save the rest. Get your new knuckle here and your new backside bearing. Put it in place. Make sure it goes in flush. There we go. Put our front bearing in it. And then, so this is what I was saying here. This, this little pin can slide out to one side or the other. Like that there. And then what happens is it won't go all the way in. So if you can't get that little clip on there, peek around the back side and be sure that didn't happen to you. And you just push it back in like that and then boom. Nice flush fit. So that's good. And what we can do here, even if you wanted to, so this didn't fall apart, you can go ahead and put your wheel hex back on like this. Like that there. And then go ahead and put your clip back on so it's an assembly and you don't have to worry about it falling apart. There. Now, ain't going anywhere. Let's go ahead and drill our arms out and put it back together. So see the back side of those arms, how small those holes are because it's that's intended to capture the stock pin. So if you haven't, you don't have the truck yet, and you're just researching this, and you're going to be doing it, that is why you have to drill it out. That way, you can get that threaded pin through there. Perfect. Just put it back together. So when you put it back together, you see the bottom side of the knuckle is wider. So that goes to the bottom. Put your dog bone back in the drive cup, and then you go ahead and put your put your screw in. So I'm going to put it in from the front side over here. Slide it right through. Slide in our upper. I'm going to come all the way through. We're going to give it a little bit of help here. I'm just going to put my three millimeter on it and kind of run it in there. There we go. See it poke right through. All right. And then just put your nuts on it. Okay, and we'll just tighten these up. These are three. There we go. And then top one. There we go. So that is the rear. The rear's all upgraded. We got our RPM hinge pins in there. We drilled them out like we needed to. We did the RPM hub hub bearings with the knuckles. The back ones have been really good. I've never broken a rear one. I've never had any issues with the bearings nothing like that I can speak for the RPM on the rears they're great the back ones I can tell you on these you're always gonna end up blowing that, that seal out of there and just destroying that bearing so these are great guys you cannot go wrong with the rear ones so let's go ahead and turn around and get to the front okay let's get this front done and the front takes a little bit longer only because you have like the actual steering knuckle then you have the, the the C knuckle or the caster block, whatever that is back there. On the Max, I call it the C knuckle, but the uh, the correct name is a uh, caster block. But everyone's kind of has their you know their slang terms for it. So let's go ahead and pull this off of here. Put your finger over it and catch it. Go ahead and pull it off. There you go. That will be reused. Okay, so let's pull our tie rod out, and that's a two and a half. That's a really long screw. You don't have to worry about mixing it up. And then we're going to remove our pin retainer screws, upper and lower. I'm going to turn my cap around, guys, because in the last video I did, you guys won't see it for a while. I'm sure it's happened before. Uh, man, the bill of my cap was getting all up in the way, and I'm like, oh, man. I felt terrible that you guys couldn't see. So start turning my cap around because uh, I'm not doing any good if you guys can't see anything. Okay, so we got those out now. I'm just going to put those down right there because... We're going to be reaching for them here pretty quick. All right, so now let's pop the upper pin out. Save it. Lower pin. Save it. Go ahead and pull your assembly out. And let's go ahead and take that axle out of there. 
be careful this pin doesn't fall out on you. If it does fall out, you end up with this here, and I'll show you how to put that back together real quick. So, it, I mean, it's common sense, but I mean, so you put this pin through this dog bone, right? And you have that you hole, see how it lines up? And you just line that up like that. So you have that, it looks like that. See the hole through it, and you just put your stub shaft or your outer, whatever you want to call it, back over it. Line your pin back up, and that's it. It's all back together. So you lay it down, lay it down where the pin can't fall out, and you'll be fine. Okay, so now we have this here. So let's go ahead and take this apart. So we have little pin retainers right here on top. You see there? And then you've got one right down here. So before you take it apart, if you've never done it before, just kind of take note of how it was on there, and that'll help you a whole lot. So let's go ahead and take that off. So let's go ahead and pull this upper retainer here. Set it down, and then lower. And then if you guys are kind of still leery about putting it back together, let's check it out. So you're gonna have a, that pin already fell out. You're gonna have this long pin on the bottom. Lay it out kind of like an exploded view that you would see on the website. Do it like this. So lay it down just like that. Pull your pin out. Lay it down here. Pull this upper pin. Lay it there. Let's move this stuff out of the way. There are little retainers. We know where those go. So lay it like that, right? And then go ahead and take your other knuckle before you pull it apart. Get you a bearing. Go ahead, take your rear bearing, and put it in there. And be sure you're doing the right one. This is a left. They're labeled right there. You see the L on there? So be sure you get the right side. That way you don't make things harder on yourself. Let's go ahead and put the bearing in the right one. The literal right one. There, now we have that ready to go. And now, just kind of look at it. Say, okay, it goes like that. And this will keep you, this will go a long way. So it goes just back like that there. So you can go ahead and take it off. Slide that up, slide that one right back down. Go ahead and remove your bearing. Like that. Transfer it over, right? Now you have a spare. And just take and put this back exactly like you took the other one off. And zero confusion, guys. There we go. And then just put your pins right back in place. So then that pin goes in there. And that pin goes in there. So now you got it all back together. And that was, that was pretty painless, right? Wasn't bad at all. Okay, and then just put your little retainers back on top. I mean, it's not like it's impossible to put together. You might be like, what the, the oh yeah, okay. I did it at the skate park one day because, uh, not skate park, I was at, at a community center and there was a, a guy out there with an X-Max with his kids and he was playing. Man, he hit a curb so hard and he broke one of the knuckles and he was like, well, I'm done, you know, I'm going to watch my little girl play with her. He hit a rustler. So that's it. It's back together. And, I mean, look at the build compared to the, the OEM. It does look stouter. It's not, these arms aren't hollow and stuff. So, I don't know. We're going to give them a run and see what they do. But, uh, now, there is one extra step we have to drill on here. We do have to drill the arms just like the other ones, but there's an extra step, and I'll show you exactly what it is. So go ahead and get your 530 seconds and let's drill the upper and lower arms as we did the other ones. Drill a small hole out. Try not to hit that front one more than I have to. There we go. So now that we have that in there like that, we can put it back in, but let me show you what, what goes wrong here. So it goes in just like this here. Go ahead and set it in place. Put your pin through. Sure, it goes all the way through. Okay, you can go ahead and put your nut on the back side there. You can go ahead and run it on there, but don't tighten it just yet. Probably can tighten it and be fine, but anyway. So now let's put this one in, and I'll show you. We're gonna put this one in from here, and we're gonna put a nut on it. Okay, so even with this this nut right here or this screw tightened all the way up, when you put your tie rod back in. This, well, I don't even need to put it back in. Look here. See how that hits right on it? Well, that's not going to work, right? Okay, so this is what we have to do. So let's take this top pin back out. 
So this is what we have to do. We have to measure the head of the screw because it's going to have to be countersunk. So we get a uh, six millimeter, right? Okay. So I'm going to take a step bit and I'm going to find where we get the same measurement. So we're getting six millimeters right there. So what I'm going to do is just kind of mark that just like that. So then we know where to stop. So now we just have to drill the upper arm on the back side to accept the head of this screw right here. And this is all I'm going to do right here. That's it. We're done. And it didn't enlarge the other side because the step of the front of the bit is smaller. So see, it works perfectly. So now check this out. We're going to take this screw, put it in, and see it's almost countersunk, but when we tighten it, it's going to pull it right in because that measured six and this screw was like right at 603. And I'm sure there's a little bit of fluctuation between all of them. So it's going to work perfectly. That's the bit that I've used for all my trucks. So now this screw is going to go in from the back side so that we can countersink it. Because if you put it the other way, the nut will countersink. However, the screw sticks out, so it doesn't work. Try to get this where you guys have the best view of everything. So now we got that bottom one in. Let's go ahead and put our drive shaft in. You can always put the drive shaft in, drive shaft in afterwards. Drop it right into place. Raise your knuckle into the dog bone. Lower your arm and put in your pin. Remember, we're going to put this in from the back side. There we go there. Okay, now for this here, you have to put a space in there because when this screw goes in all the way, you can already see that there's a part of the shoulder sticking out. When, once it pulls in tight and this goes flush, there's going to be too much sticking out and it's going to allow that pin to float back and forth, which I guess really doesn't hurt anything, but it's not right. What I do is I have some of these little plastic deals here. I don't know what they're for exactly. They're in a shock kit. I'll find out what they're for and I'll put it in the description if you guys want to do that. If nothing else, you just get you some washers to put on the back side there. You're going to need about a 4 millimeters worth of washers. But actually, this looks like it's made for it once I do what I do. I end up turning them down just a little bit. See there, I shorten them. I just do it on a grinder. Just put them in a pair of ice grips and just touch it on the grinder real quick. Real quick. Or you can use a flat file, do it by hand. Doesn't take that long either. And let me show you what it looks like. Um, and see, if you didn't drill, countersink this hole, it would be fine. The screw would be the right length. But then... You don't have any turning radius. You'll get it together and it won't turn. It'll turn a huge circle and you're like, why won't it turn? And you'll never, you'll never think that it's that, that, uh, those screws you put in. So those have to be done that way. Okay, so now, remember we drilled this out and it was a hair smaller than the screw. So it didn't go in flush. You see there? As I tighten it up, you're going to see it pull in. And it'll be nice and snug. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on here. And let's pull this into place. Watch that, Alan. Perfect. Okay, there it is. You see how the front looks now? It looks fine. It doesn't look bad. And then the back, let me show you how pretty it countersunk. You see there? It looks like it's made for it. And then you don't lose any. It's clear. It's completely clear. You don't lose any turning radius. You see there? It's perfect. All right, so we got that all back together. Let's go ahead and just put our tie rod in, and then we're done with this side. It goes right back into place. And we're going to use that long screw that we took out. These little hollow balls can be something else to line up sometimes. Not line up, but to get in there. This was a two and a half. Good and tight. Okay, let's go ahead and put our wheel hex back on. Be sure the axle is all the way out. Put your pin back on there, and that is it. RPM hubs, front and rear, upper hinge pins are put in. We do need to tighten the bottom one up. Don't forget that, Kevin. Your little backup tool or whatever you're using. Tighten that one up. This one's not going to countersink. doesn't need to. Hmm. Can't hold it tight enough. I'm going to... just going to hold it with some fire strips here just real quick. All right. Good enough. Okay, so there we go. Upper, lower hinge pin bolts are in now. We got the RPM hubs all installed with new bearings. So it's a lot, it's getting stouter by the minute here. Let's go ahead and knock this out real fast. Let's get this tie rod loose and we'll take our upper and lower pins out right here. Okay, let's pop off our wheel hex. Lay it right down. Like that. Push our pins out. 
Okay, we'll just get rid of those pins and put those over here. Okay, let's go ahead and, whoa, this pin fell out. Oh, no, it didn't. Okay, let's go ahead and swap these hubs over real fast, these knuckles. So we're going to do just like we did the last ones. Here it is right here. Back bearings already in this one. Remember, we popped it in earlier. Transfer your bearing over first. And then you're going to remove the pin retainers on these. Let them fall out. The pin will slide right out. Dump that one out. Just like that there. And then we're gonna, we'll lay this just like the other one is oriented. So it's like that. Take it off. Swap it right over. These tend to fit a little bit tighter than stock. So now it's all back together. We'll just line our pins back up. That one's in. That one's in. And I'm going a little faster on this one because we've already done the other side. So there's really no need to showing all of it. But if you're going to do it, might as well do it all, right? You could encounter something differently. You never know. Things go wrong sometimes. Okay, there we go. Got that all back together. So we can go ahead and put this together now in assembly. Put that back in. Make sure it's in flush. Grab your new your wheel hex. Put it on. And then your pin. Don't fly across the room. Don't fly across the room. I'm going to lay it down because I feel like I'm taking a chance here. I'm going to push it on a little screwdriver. There. That's all ready to go. We need to take care of the drilling on our arms. Being the way the truck is right now, I'm going to go ahead and drill it from the front. I normally would just drill the back side, but I'm going to go through the existing hole and punch that back side out. Be sure it's cleaned out well. Okay, we got those drilled out. Now remember, we need to make room for that Allen up here. And I'm going to do that with my step drill. You can see on this back side. I don't know if you can see the video, it's not cutting. It's not going to cut until you get a good way through there. Let's see there. Will that go flush? Not quite. Take your time with it. Perfect. You see there? Now check it out. It goes in just perfect right there, so that's all we need. Alright, now we can go ahead and put it right back together. I already have my little pre-made spacer here. Like I said, you guys can use washers. That's totally fine. So, let's go ahead and grab our knuckle. Or grab our assembly, rather. Put the dog bone. Put the bottom half in. Put your bottom pin in there. Like that. Put your nut on the back side. Now this, remember, this one has to go this way so we can countersink this head so you have your full range of motion here, or whatever you want to call it. There it is. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Went right in there. I went just a hair deeper with it this time. Then I'm going to put my little, my little spacer on there like that, and then the nut. I mean, I'm going to hold this nut with vice grips this time because that little tool is hard to hold. Perfect. And that's what it looks like all put together. And see, you've got plenty of room there. It's got actually some daylight in there. It's not going to touch whatsoever. So then just put your tie rod back on, guys. Okay. We'll grab our two and a half and tighten that back up. Good and tight. All right, guys. So, so we got those installed. We got. Now we have some more spare parts here. Let me see what we got. Let me see what we got. So we got a bunch of pins left over. We got our front and rear knuckles. Got some spare bearings. Some retainer screws that held the pins in. And I believe that's all the spares we're going to have. So this is all good parts for our, for our emergency little part box. So there you have it. Hinge pin bolts, RPM hubs front and rear. How to install them. Not bad at all. Pretty quick. Probably take you 40 minutes to do front and rear. Probably less. Um, I hope this helped you guys out. Um, I'm going to put this video in my little, uh, in a different playlist. It's going to be a max play, uh, X Max playlist, but I think I'm going to label this playlist um, Bulletproof Your X Max or X Max 
bulletproofing, something like that. It does help a lot. Of course, it's never going to be indestructible, you know, but it helps a lot. The next upgrade you guys are going to see is going to be either uh, the gear upgrade or it's going to be the servo. The servo, I had one. I sold it to a buddy. I have to buy another one. Stay tuned. And uh, you guys have fun out there. It's the most important part. You guys have fun with your cars. I hope you guys find time to go out and run them. I stay real busy. A lot of times I don't have time to run them very much. Um, with that being said, guys, I will see you in the next video. I hope to see you guys tune in. God bless. Y'all stay safe. Have fun out there. Just going to put my tires back on and get on to the next video.